guys, water, only the bare essentials, let's get into it. So we're going to have three questions as normal. The three questions are, what is the structure of water? How does water structure affect its properties? And how are water's properties important for living organisms? The questions are the main part of this. I'm going to explain my preferred answers to these questions, but I would like you guys to take away these questions and practice them again and again until you're basically as good at explaining it as I am. Okay, maybe even better, who knows? All right, let's get into it. What is the structure of water? Structure of water is H2O, two hydrogens, oxygen. So we've got an oxygen, it's covalently bonded to two hydrogens, okay? Now, the oxygen has a greater share of the, remember the, the covalent bonds are shared electrons, but oxygen has a greater of that, of the share of those electrons. So what happens is because the electrons are negatively charged, oxygen develops a partial negative charge, okay? And the hydrogens, because they have, they have less of the share of those electrons, they develop a partial positive charge, which means that water molecules are polar. Okay, they are polar, they've got a negative side, they've got a, po a partially negative side and a partial positive side, and that is what ultimately affects its properties. Okay, why is that? So, that takes us to the next question. I told you it was going to be short and sweet. How does water structure affect its properties? So because of that, how does that affect the properties of the substance, water? Um, and essentially, because of the positive and negative sides of the water molecule, the water molecules tend to attract each other. Those attractions are known as hydrogen bonds, okay? Which makes, um, you know, the water's um, properties very unique to other substances. So how does that work? So you have oxygen and you have hydrogen. Remember that the oxygen is negative partially, and the hydrogen is partially positive. So if you have another water molecule in the vicinity, okay, what happens is that because this oxygen is partially negative, a hydrogen bond forms between that oxygen, the oxygen of one water molecule and the hydrogen of another water molecule. This is known as a hydrogen bond, whereas these are your covalent bonds, okay? If you're not too sure about that, hop back to your GCSE chemistry and just look over that stuff. No shame in that whatsoever, okay? Um, do whatever it takes, guys, okay? Um, and this can continue. So this hydrogen itself might be in a kind of hydrogen bond with the oxygen of another water molecule and so on. And you can see why these molecules then, you know, if I pull this water molecule, the others will follow because there, there is that attraction between them, hydrogen bonding, okay? So I'll put that down here as a key explaining factor between um, the, or, or the key connection between water structure and its properties is hydrogen bonding, okay? All right, so because of the hydrogen bonding that exists between the water molecules, it results in certain properties, and I'm just gonna list them out here. Okay, so as we've already discussed, because the water molecules have this attraction between them, um, that is known as cohesion, okay? So water molecules are cohesive with each other. Um, water molecules also, they are adhesive. What that means is because they have this partial positive and partial negative side, they are attracted to other things which might not be water molecules but might themselves have negative and positive charges. Water is adhesive. Water can stick to some things that are or, or stick to other things. So water is adhesive. Uh, kind of related to that, water is a good solvent. It's good at dissolving other polar and charge substances. Okay, because of its um, positive and negative sides, um, it can surround positive ions, it can surround negative ions, and, and separate them from their crystal structures, uh, salt structures. Okay, so cohesion, adhesive, adhesive, solvent, it's got interesting thermal properties as well, which we'll get to. Okay, basically, the hydrogen bonding, because the water molecules are attracted to each other, it takes a lot of energy to break the hydrogen bonds. 
That means a lot of energy can be absorbed by water before its particles can be freed from each other and start moving around more, increasing their temperature. Okay, so water's got interesting thermal properties as well. Um, it's got interesting freezing properties, which might come under thermal, but most substances, when they freeze, the particles get closer together. Water, when it freezes, the particles become slightly more separated from each other. It's, it's all to do with a lattice arrangement of the water molecules, which makes these spaces between the water molecules. So as these water molecules kind of arrange themselves into a lattice structure, it opens up these gaps between them. And what, what that means is there's more gaps between water molecules when water is frozen um, compared to when water is a liquid. When those water molecules are moving over each other, these gaps aren't there. So uh, water freezes to form a less dense structure. OK, do I have everything here? Uh, OK, well, anyway, the point of this video is not to be super thorough. The point is, we've got some stuff there. This is the revision process that I would like you guys to repeat. As you can see, three simple questions. Let's get a piece of paper. Let's answer those questions. Let's do it again and again until we are good enough. OK, right. So the third part of this is, how are these properties useful for organisms? So we just want to throw some examples of where these properties are useful for organisms. OK, so what comes to mind? Um, again, this does not have to be an exhaustive list, OK? If there's anything lacking in, in what we're doing right now, we simply check that out in a textbook, we add it to our notes, and we improve the rehearsal procedure next time, OK? So in terms of cohesion, um, and in fact, if, if you think that I've missed anything here, I think if you, if you message it um, into me or into the video, it will help other students as they watch as well. All right, so in terms of cohesion, water molecules stick together. Um, it allows wa uh, the water to be a good transport medium because it allows water molecules to move as one body. Uh, what that means is when, when there's a high pressure in one place and there's a low pressure in another place, um, the water molecules will move from the high pressure to the low pressure. Basically, that just means if you, if you squeeze one end of a pipe, you know, you move the fluid to the other end of the pipe. Okay? So mass flow is possible because the water molecules... That wouldn't be possible if there were spaces between the water molecules, okay? Because then you'd squash the water molecules on this side and they would just get closer together. But because they can't get any more close together than they already are, they literally are forced to move from one place to another. Um, so mass flow, it allows um, water to act as a transport medium, right? So things like the, the water in xylem vessels, the f water that is in the phloem sieve tube elements, the water that is, forms the plasma, in the circulatory system, right? That's all possible, right? The, the stuff in those substances is moved along because of mass flow. And mass flow is occurring because of cohesion, okay? Now, remember, this is a revision video, but if any part of what I'm saying doesn't make sense, please make a note of that and, and, and investigate further. Um, take a step back to GCSE and, and, and think about how that stuff connects to the new stuff. Usually the problems at A-levels are caused when there's a, a gap in understanding at a GCSE level, but obviously we're all too good to go back to GCSE, aren't we? Shouldn't be beneath you. Uh, mass flow, transport medium, um, adhesive, right. Now the adhesive part, uh, that's water sticking, remember, to other things, and uh, remember that in the, uh, sorry, in fact, we could put translocation here, right? So that, that water, um, translocation, we're talking circulatory systems. OK, right. Now, when it comes to adhesion, um, that's water sticking to other things. Where is that useful? Well, it's useful in the transport of water in plants. Right, and we're specifically we're talking about xylem. We're talking about you know big, tall trees or you know tall plants. Um, how does water move against the force of gravity? 
Um, it does so because of the cohesion tension theory, the transpiration um, stream, right? And, and part of that relies on water's ability to stick to the walls of the xylem vessels and, you know, to an extent, creep up the xylem vessels. At least that's one of the forces that helps the water to move upwards, okay? So um, in xylem, we're talking about the cohesion tension theory, right? And that kind of overlaps with that as well. Okay, uh, actually, actually, um, yeah, mass flow, transport medium, we can, cohesion, yeah, so cohesion tension theory we'll put here, cohesion tension. So that's when water is lost from the leaves, and because the, all these water molecules are kind of attracted to each other because of cohesive forces, when the water is lost from the leaf, it kind of pulls water up the xylem vessels as well. So that's kind of uh, to do with cohesion. But where does the adhesion come into it? Well, there's a phenomenon called capillary, capillary action. Now what that means is the, the, you know, the meniscus, it forms because the, the water molecules towards the, uh, towards the edges they're kind of sticking to the walls of the beaker or measuring cylinder and kind of creeping up. And that's also true in xylem as well. Okay. All right, solvent. Now, water is very good at dissolving things. So because of that, right, dissolves metabolites, shall we say, or dissolves biologically important water molecules. Things like, now, you know, the circulatory system is, you know, moving things around the body. Uh, sucrose is moving by translocation in the plant. Uh, mineral ions are moving through the xylem vessels. Now, all those things are possible because water is good at dissolving those things that are getting transported. And those things can only move because water has dissolved them properly. All right, so things like glucose, Things like amino acids, things like mineral ions, sodium, potassium, etc. Okay, these things are dissolved oxygen, carbon dioxide. All these things can be transported effectively because water is a good solvent because of its partial positive and partial negative charges. Okay, thermal properties, they're interesting. So this comes up quite a bit in, in biology. In terms of the thermal properties, we're looking at um, this latent, high latent heat, latent heat of, high latent heat of evaporation, okay, which helps organisms to um, control their temperature, so, right? So temperature homeostasis, when water as sweat um, evaporates from the organism or even water evaporating away from a plant. When it does so, because energy goes into breaking the hydrogen bonds to help the water molecules kind of escape, um, that energy is lost. So the heat energy from the organism is absorbed into, those, into breaking those hydrogen bonds. And in doing so, the organism loses some of its heat. Uh, as the water evaporates. So it allows the organism to control their temperatures that way. Okay, um, it's got a high specific heat capacity, which means it's similar, it's related, but slightly different in bodies of water, right? So, you know, as us, as water in cytoplasm, water in the organism, water that surrounds aquatic organisms in the oceans, ponds, etc. It takes a lot of energy to raise the temperature of water, right? Raising the temperature of water means get them moving more. The thing is, because of the hydrogen bonds acting as glue between the water uh, particles, um, it takes a lot of energy input to break those hydrogen bonds to get those water molecules moving to raise the temperature, okay? So because of that, the temperature of water, the temperature of bodies of water, uh, remains relatively stable, even though the atmospheric temperature changes quite a bit. Again, that also helps uh, regulate temperature uh, or temperature homeostasis of organisms, survival of organisms. Okay, um, I don't think I'm missing anything here now. Let's move on to freezing. Now, because water is less, 
less dense as a solid, because it's less dense as a solid, it forms ice. Right? Now, ice is cool because, because it forms this kind of white substance, it, it reflects a lot of the solar radiation. And because of that, that's one of the things that keeps the temperature of Earth relatively uh, habitable. Right? Ice can also form habitats right, for organisms such as, you know, in the, in the polar regions, it forms habitats for, for those organisms. They're adapted to survive there. Okay, but also ice is insulating, right? So whereas on the surface of, of bodies of water, we have the ice, right? The ice is actually insulating the water, liquid water below, right? Which means that the, the fish and the other aquatic organisms in the water um, uh, get to survive because the top layer of ice is keeping the water below liquid and preventing it from freezing. Okay, so um, yeah, I think that's a little bit more than what we've discussed, but this is the point. Okay, three questions. These are the answers. Let's keep doing it again and again and keep getting better at it. And if by doing so it helps us to identify certain things that don't quite make sense to us, then we get to work and figure those things out. We are scientists, that's our job. We've, we've been given a problem, we don't understand something, we've got to make sense of it. Okay, um, and that's it. All right, guys, this is where you get to work. Good luck.